Hi there, folks. This snippet of video for Research Lab in Language in Perception and Thought is devoted to the question, what is language? Now, the reason we're touching base with this topic in what's ostensibly a psychology course is because we plan to develop and plan out in exquisite detail a proposal for research that will test a hypothesis about the relationship between language and cognition. In order to do this though, we're going to have to be able to describe the feature of language that we plan to investigate in immaculate detail. And we're going to have to be able to describe the language that is under investigation. So what is language to begin with? Well, in this class, we're going to use a very pragmatic working definition of language. Languages are made up of symbols, which we might think of as words or signs, uh, that are paired together with reference, some kind of meaning. Symbols that we use in communication with others refer to something. They refer to a concept or an object in the world. They trigger for us some sense of meaning. Symbols are related to some kind of mental representation that we have of how things are in the world. The symbols that we use to represent things in the world are agreed by our linguistic community. That means if you and I use a particular word to represent a particular concept, that is a shared symbol in our linguistic community. Linguistic communities can be small or large, but they're living entities uh, with overlap between different users of different linguistic codes. The other property that linguistic systems have is rules. We might like to call a rule syntax or grammar or a statistical regularity, but all we mean when we refer to symbols and rules is that the rules allow us to combine our symbols into larger units of meaning. Just like symbols, the rules that we use are agreed, shared by between people who are part of one linguistic community together. So in the example I've got on the screen here, we have two different ways of combining the symbol dog and the symbol space with some kind of a joining word in. And these two combinations of symbols have different outcomes in the internal structure of the larger unit of meaning. So dog in space or space in dog. So I hope you take the point that all a linguistic system has to have is symbols and rules that are agreed on by the community of users who use that linguistic system together. And when we have phenomena like this, we can call it a linguistic system. With this perspective behind us, we will be able to talk and think about what is the target linguistic feature for the participants that we enroll in our studies. So remembering that if something is shared, it is true of the linguistic system shared by our users. What that means is we are not limited to formal varieties of the language, and we are not limited to words that are only in the dictionary, and we are not limited to only those expressions or ways of expressing ourselves that your teachers in school thought were suitable. Rather, we are open to the world of possibilities of shared symbolization among a community of people who share those symbols together. And that's why I'm excited to work with you on your linguistic systems, the ones that you are most familiar with, so that your data collection exercise can be finely tuned to the participants that you want to work with. That's all from me on what is language for now, but you'll find more text, readings and perspectives over uh, on the materials provided on our Padlet.